Good evening all, and welcome. To those of you who listen to this at night time, preparing for a blissful slumber, I do hope you forgive me, and that we do not induce sleep paralysis. For as we're about to learn, that would truly be horrifying. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I've never experienced sleep paralysis in my life until recently. The first time it happened, I wasn't able to move, and I tried my hardest to scream or yell or make some connection to the real world through physical action. I saw a giant pink head floating above me, and I began freaking out. Once I was able to move, I flailed and realized it was just the pink curtains I have above my couch. I sleep on my couch despite having a bed. It's more comfortable for me. The second time it happened, I saw the pink head again, but I realized it was sleep paralysis and my terror quelled. I've been taking an off brand of Unicern recently because it helps me sleep and I typically don't dream. I don't take sleeping pills. I usually have vivid and terrible nightmares. I know this isn't healthy, but it helps me. So, the story. I went to New York recently for work. I drove 12 hours there, which went by quickly because of the podcast I was listening to. Work was great, and when it was time to leave, I chose to drive at night to avoid traffic. On my drive home, a tornado watch hit, and the rain began coming down super hard. I was in Pennsylvania at the time, and took an exit saying the Poconos. I don't know if it was the actual mountains, but it did seem mountainous. I pulled into an abandoned gas station parking lot, and pulled in towards the back. There were no cars around, and the station was chained off. The rain passed, And as it did, I passed out. I had a very vivid dream of running on all fours chasing a horse through the fog, until I lost the horse, and instead, saw three people in hooded robes. They pointed behind me, and when I looked, I was in a house cluttered with antiques and fishing hooks hanging from the ceiling. The only thing I can describe as to what I saw next was a porcelain Picasso painting come to life. It stumbled around the corner and tried chasing me through the fish hooks. I woke up from the nightmare and was experiencing sleep paralysis in an unfamiliar area, in a state I never go to alone in my car at 2 a.m. at night in an abandoned gas station parking lot, just after a heavy thunderstorm. Needless to say, I was petrified. I couldn't move or scream, and I realized my doors were unlocked. I imagine I see a man staring at me through the driver's side window, smiling a cartoonishly big smile. I know that is cliche and a little dumb, but it was horrifying at the time. When I snap out of my sleep paralysis, I look out the driver's side window, and the man is gone. What I saw instead sent chills down my spine. Next to me in this abandoned lot was an SUV parked next to me. It was a very large parking lot, so to park next to me seems odd, even thinking back. There was no one in the SUV. I did a quick scan of the parking lot and saw no one. I checked my clock and was amazed to see that only 30 minutes had passed. I started my car and did a slow roll through the parking lot, desperately hoping I could see someone that the SUV may belong to, but there was no one in sight. I got the hell out of there and merged back onto the interstate, which had no cars on it whatsoever. I have no idea what to make of this. I know that my sleep paralysis demon is inspired by a real object near me. Was this an actual dude looking at me while I was paralyzed? There was definitely a person around at some time, 
since there was an SUV next to me. I don't think it was paranormal in any way, but was just unfortunate timing. Either way, I really don't want to meet whoever that was again. I was out in the middle of nowhere, camping with my dog. We do this whenever we can. Not a park or campground, just walk, walk, walk through the woods among the trails. Pipelines and old access roads. Find a nice place to settle down and set up camp. I spend my time building a fire ring, obtaining wood from fallen trees and setting up a tent for us while he runs around telling porcupines he wants to be their new best friend and chasing them off like deer, like they're there to steal his supper. This past summer, night falls, and we retire to the confines of our tent. I read a bit. He turns circles until he remembers he won't actually ever get comfortable out there. So then he settles in against my leg. When you sleep outside, you don't sleep straight though. I don't. I wake up every 30 minutes. It doesn't bother me. It's part of our reptile brain. Something says, this isn't as protected as it needs to be. No big deal. It's part of the experience. Why I sleep through it all anyway. When you have these periodic moments of presence. I'd rather be here than anywhere. And I'm here right now. It's nice. It's still. It's 3am and I'm dozing when suddenly I'm awoken. Something is wrong and I can sense it with every part of my being. My first instinct is to protect the dog. There must be an animal outside and a canine's nature is to defend. He'll hurt himself to protect me and I have to stop that from happening. But then I realize this is not an animal threat. This is more sinister. My eyes have remained closed throughout all of this because these thoughts occur in mere seconds. I open my eyes knowing that if there were an animal close, he'd have been up and moving before me. That's how nature works. So no, there is a bigger problem. Someone must be out there and his intent is not benevolent. In that moment, I try to move, but can't. I'm paralyzed. How? By what? I feel it roll through me like a wave of electricity. Down my legs, up my chest, sparks flowing across my arms. Then I realize what's happening. I'm not breathing. I don't actually mentally make the connection. Instead, my body constricts and I find myself suddenly gulping air. You don't think about breathing, unless you're actually thinking about it. I've read about sleep paralysis, and I've had a few experiences, perhaps four to five in my entire life. But I still remember this one in particular, because I think this was different, and I could see and experience more than I think. It was two or three a.m., and I was having this traumatic sleep paralysis. The one where you can't feel or move at all. Not even your eyeballs, nor any part of your body. And it's terrifying. In just a matter of seconds, I could move my head just a little bit. And luckily, I could turn and my whole body would move to one side. That was the moment when I saw it. At that moment, I was awake, still confused about this moment because I wasn't sure if it was just my imagination or if what I was watching was real. Then I got shocked because there was this dark figure right next to me and it was so clear that I could make out a precise description of it. It was humanoid in shape, about one meter tall it was darker than dark itself. And it had this particular thing, like a shining nervous system, electrical and barely shining through its body, that really caught my eye a lot. And that creature was observing me, putting his hand on me. 
but when I could move even more, I moved my arm towards him, trying to touch him somewhat, but my hand passed through him. When that happened, he just left walking, like in slow motion away, and vanished. This was about seven months ago, but I still remember it as if it were yesterday. There was so much detail that my memory kept, and I'm trying to figure out if it was just my sleep paralysis or something more. After this weird experience, just moments later, I didn't feel afraid anymore, just really curious. Four nights ago, a long-time family friend died, and yes, it was very much on my mind. I was very sad and could not stop thinking about him. I've got absolutely no idea if this matters, except that I've been thinking about dying, and people who have passed, but who knows, I would be the first one, and it would may have just been wished for thinking. Anyway, three nights ago at around 12.30 at night, I was awoken. I thought originally something bad was crushing me but I had the split second thought or feeling of evil, and I was absolutely terrified. In fact, terror isn't even close to the sheer horror I was feeling. I had never felt anything remotely like this before, in my dream, or if I was awake. Maybe sleep paralysis, I just didn't know. I tried screaming for help, but of course, no voice. Then I tried punching the wall, and it was like moving through water. I was frantic. I tried kicking the wall, but it was the same, like moving through water. Then it stopped, or did I wake up? I just don't know. I was out of breath, and was really, really terrified. Two nights later, my last night, I was sleeping on my back when I thought I felt someone glide across my upper leg. I nearly screamed, and jumped up to turn the light on. God, but nothing was there. After a minute or two I calmed down, and turned off the lights to try and resume my sleep. But there were a lot of really odd noises, just little ones. Strange, but I was trying to convince myself it was all in my head. I fell asleep again, but woke up finally to another horrible snarling, growling, and snapping sound coming from something under the bed, and I felt it come up onto the bed behind my head, something close to my ear, before moving down as if to me again. It was awful, the most powerful awful sound and feeling even writing this makes my heart hurt. I've never ever had anything like this happen to me before. I've had experiences that have always more or less been unexplained, but those experiences have always been good. At least, not in the scary way. My husband is on night shift again tonight, and there's no way I'm sleeping in that same bedroom. I think I'll just stay up. Last night I ran out of the bedroom and watched TV until he got home. At that point, I was still shaken and really thought I wouldn't relive it by telling him anything even then. Last night I ran out of the bedroom and watched TV until he got home. I couldn't even tell him when he asked me why I was up. I said I'd tell him tomorrow. At that time, I was still shaken and really thought I wouldn't relive it by telling him anything. Common sense tells me it's a dream, but God, I'll never forget it. First off, for a little backstory, I'm currently 29, and this started when I was 16 or 17. I love watching scary slash horror movies and I've never had them affect my sleep or give me nightmares. 
just in case you think that's what caused this. I also have to wear glasses, so you can understand my concern. The night when this occurred, I was going to sleep at around 11pm slash midnight with my door slightly open so that my cat could enter my room. I feel a sense of unease and look at my alarm clock and saw it was a little after 12am and just thought my cat had entered my room. I couldn't see slash feel her near me. Then out of nowhere, I can't move and have a hard time breathing. I'm struggling to turn my head and I somehow power through and I can see that my door is halfway open and there's a red floating specter. It's dressed in what I can only tell with my blurred vision, a blood red torn ragged cloak. I'm freaking out trying to scream so my brother or mother can come help, but I can't. As I'm struggling to move and scream, it raises its hand out of the cloak and points at me with a red skeletal finger. This freaks me out even more, and I can't move at all. Stuck in a position with my head facing this thing, with my blurry vision, it looks like it's speaking, but I can't hear anything. As this thing moves closer to me, I can hear my cat jump from what I'm guessing is my dresser to my bed, and starts hissing at this thing. This thing now retreats and disappears, and I can move. My throat is sore, as if I had been screaming, but no sound had been coming out. I grab my cat, and can feel her tense, and her fur is standing on end. I put her under the covers and hug her tightly, since it appears that she has saved me. I feel comforted by her, and somehow was able to sleep after that. In the morning I checked where the spectre was, and there was no proof it was ever there. I think it was a very vivid dream, and decide not to tell my family. The next night, I don't sleep, and since I drive myself to school for early morning band practice, my mother hasn't seen me in a few days. That day, my best bud saw that I was tired, and asked what was wrong. Since he believed in the supernatural, I tell him, and he believes me, since he knows I'm not the type of person to make this up. He just says, that's rough, and that was it. I finished high school and community college with a few instances of sleep paralysis, every year, but without a spectre. By this time I've researched, and my buddy has helped me deal with this. I make it to my second year into the four years at university, and get a place of my own, and I'm roughly 26 at the time. One night, I see the same spectre appear, but I've learnt a few tricks to deal with it. This may sound stupid, but it worked every time. I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z and other anime, and my favourite character is Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. I simply pretended I'm powering up this beam and have a beam struggle and screaming like they do in Dragon Ball Z. By doing this, I was able to get rid of the sleep paralysis, and I thought the same thing would work with the spectre. To make a long story short, I win, and ever since, I've never had another instance of sleep paralysis. This story takes place a couple of weeks ago, at around 8.50am. For the story, you should know that I sleep with a large pillow over my upper body for comfort. This comes in later. I was in bed, sleeping, but not actually sleeping. I was in a state that most of us know to be sleep paralysis, a state where you are temporarily stuck between consciousness and unconsciousness. Basically, you can't move no matter how hard you try. 
you have only two or three out of five senses, which means you'll be lying there being able to hear and feel, but not be able to smell or taste. As I'm laying there trying to jolt myself awake, I notice that I can't move, but I can hear and feel, which instantly tells me that I'm in sleep paralysis. I slowly start to panic. See, the thing with sleep paralysis is that it's an extremely volatile situation. The more fearful you become, the more intense the experience becomes. So I'm laying there struggling to wake myself, and I'm starting to feel this small, but extremely heavy body heave itself onto the lower left side of my mattress around my legs. There aren't any children in my house. At this point, I'm already terrified to no end, and I'm still struggling to wake myself when I feel this thing grab my upper leg. Then, it slowly climbs up towards my upper body and yanks the pillow off me. I instantly jolt awake in a cold sweat, looking frantically around my room, and notice that my pillow is almost on the floor. My heart is racing, and my blood is pounding in my ears. What just happened? What was that? Did it just pull my pillow off me? I sat there trying to calm myself down, in an attempt to rationalize things in my head. When I realized there was no way that I could have caused my pillow to slide off me in the sleeping position, even if I tried. For the next few days, I was pretty scared to go back to sleep, in fear that I might slip into another episode of sleep paralysis. I did have another experience, but it didn't last very long. I am a person that has had paranormal experiences for a long time. I hear things and see things from time to time. Most of my encounters had to do with what most people will call shadow people. I've seen them since I was around 13 or 12, but that's a different story. This has nothing to do with what I've experienced before. This scares me even more. It started when I moved. I was very excited the first place I came to see. It was huge, and there was a ton of space for me to put all my stuffed animals and art supplies. When we settled in, we agreed that me and my sister would live upstairs in the attic. The house has two floors and a basement. People live downstairs in the basement, and we got to keep the upstairs and downstairs. I loved my new room. It was like having a new mini apartment all to myself. But the attic had this small dark room near where we sleep that is to keep all the stuff to do with the air conditioner and the vents in the room. That small room always made me feel uncomfortable, and just made me extremely afraid. I thought it was just because it was so dark, and I'm afraid of the dark, but I don't think that's the case anymore. I kept having these reoccurring dreams, where I see a kid, or a small person in my room, walking near me. I can never see him clearly though. I always wake up with sleep paralysis. The first time I had this dream, I was so scared, I went crying to my parents. Something I literally never do, since I'm 17, and not the type to cry in front of them. Anyway, the first dream was weird. It started with my boyfriend pissing me off after talking to these two girls. Then I ran to the church had dinner with my grandmother, who passed away when I was nine, and her friends. It was a pretty nice dream at first, 
without the getting angry part, of course, but I loved dreaming with her. After eating, I think I told her I was going to sleep, and when I went to bed, I went to sleep and felt someone in my face. I couldn't open my eyes as hard as I tried. I was trying to scream so that my sister could hear me, but nothing. From slits, I managed to slightly open. I could see it was laughing at me. Laughing because I was unable to move. Laughing at me struggling. I was terrified. I stayed awake crying for an hour alone until I decided to call my mum. Lately, I haven't felt safe at home. I'm not the most religious, though I do believe in a higher power. I have crosses in my room and rosaries as well. I pray sometimes, but I suppose it's not enough. All I know is that I'm so tired, and I know I won't be able to sleep tonight. Everything I'm about to tell you is true, and rather banal if you've not experienced sleep paralysis yet. In such a state, it feels as if you're paralyzed, yet aware of your surroundings. Many associate this with demonic or dark forces. An array of independent accounts are documented of attacks by unknown mass that sits on one's chest, inducing a feel of suffocation. My paralysis was intermittent, but terrifying each time, except for one. Through the implications of what I've witnessed, have haunted me since. This episode was unique in its serenity. I met someone in college, and later we moved into a small home in a historically haunted old city. While I finished my degree, he was flipping houses, so we already knew where we would reside and had been staying there for many months. The bedroom we slept in was quite small. On my side of the bed was the entrance, and just to the right were double mirror sliding doors for the closet. Just to the right of this, in the very corner of the room, was a chair. This is important later. It was in this room that the phenomenon occurred. I could not move, but was not afraid. I was lying on my side facing the wall. The room wasn't dark, as morning light had begun to reflect off the closet mirrors. In this state, I saw a woman in a white gown cross to the entrance, walk past the mirror, and disappear into the corner with a chair. She was translucent, but otherwise looked normal. The aspect I often struggle to convey is how, when I awoke seconds later, the perspective of my vision, that room in that moment, looked exactly like it did when I was paralyzed. There's no way to prove this even to myself, but it was as if her eyes had never closed. There was this moment between worlds, between states of regular consciousness, and I was there. I sat up, bewildered. I woke up my partner and immediately said, I saw a woman in white cross in front of the mirror. His response could not have been more shocking. Oh, that's Mary. I leave a chair there for her. I was in shock. He came from a religious family, and there was nothing that suggested to me he'd ever had any beliefs beyond that. We'd never had a conversation regarding any aspect of the paranormal, until that night. He's not the joking type, so I find him to be credible. I still do research from time to time on these old houses. This one was built in 1953, and two of its occupants, a husband and wife, were deceased before we lived there. But that's all I've been able to find out. In conclusion, I now believe I've seen a full-bodied apparition. I've also come to realize how vulnerable we are to various spiritual dimensions during sleep paralysis. And perhaps I was lucky. This realm was innocuous. If you should ever find yourself quite literally stuck to your bed, wiggle your fingers and toes to escape, or stay, if you dare. I worked the weekend night shift at a private residence of only 12 residents. 
They were all autonomous, able-bodied, but they suffered from mental illness that kept them from being fully independent. Super nice bunch of people, and they don't have anything to do with what happened. For context, my mum got me the job at the residence. She worked days during the week, and occasionally slept over there at times. When I left, she switched from working the week to weekends working like me. There was a small side of the residence dedicated to the employees, and in that side there was a bedroom with two beds. One for the employees, and the other one for the boss who slept there most weeknights. There was a senior cat in the residence, but she had a bad habit of urinating on the employee bed. So we kept the door closed most nights, but sometimes we'd forget. Well, I forgot to close the door one night. The cat peed, so I resorted to borrowing the other bed for the night. It was 3am-ish, so I couldn't start a load of laundry. I fell asleep fine, but then I had this really weird dream. I was in this private all-girls school, and I was constantly followed by a young 12 to 13 year old girl in uniform. She didn't speak to me, but she sat next to me in the library or at lunch and would just stare at me. Eventually she grabbed my binder and tried to pry it away from me. I told her she couldn't have it but she kept on trying to yank it away, becoming increasingly angry and frantic. Then she stopped all at once, looked me dead in the eyes and said, I guess I have to kill you. And then I woke up entirely paralyzed and unable to breathe. There was a huge pressure on my chest and I had an impending sense of doom and of being watched. I was facing the wall, so I couldn't turn to see what was going on. The only way I can describe it is having a panic attack while your body is sedated. Eventually I calmed down and my body started to move. When I looked behind me, there was nothing or no one. I'd never experienced sleep paralysis up until this point, but a quick Google search had reassured me that I wasn't crazy. When I slept in the other bed, everything was fine. I didn't have the same dreams, woke up fine, etc. Here's where my mind boggles. I've had to sleep in the other bed a handful of times over the years I've worked there, and each of those times I've had a variation of the same dream. The same girl, same expression. It was so unsettling. By the third dream I started becoming lucid, where I would recognize her from my other dreams and start trying to appease her. She'd take my pencil. I'd let her and I'd try everything not to anger her. But in the end, she'd always end up saying that she was going to kill me. And I would wake up with sleep paralysis and this sense of impending doom slash being watched. What scared me the most was the time where I would wake up, but I would still hear her scream or laugh. But I am willing to swear my life that I was awake. I don't know how to explain it, but by the time the sleep paralysis wore off, or I forced myself out of it, it was quiet again. It never happened anywhere else, not in the other bed, not at home, not anywhere. This isn't the main reason I left the job, but in the back of my mind, staying the nights was really anxiety inducing. It was always that bed, and it still baffles me to this day. Part of me is morbidly fascinated and trying to find a psychological explanation for it. And the other part of me wonders if it was something more. Have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? Because I have. And this statement holds more truth than you can possibly know. I have literally changed since my major sleep paralysis episode. I did not believe in evil entities until one got inside of me. Chris, my son, saved me from being taken completely, but the residue is still with me. I think this is the very reason that I'm so angry, mean, and depressed all of the time. I used to be such a positive person, despite everything that happened to me. Now, 
and very, very dark. And medication changes nothing. The dark depression never lifts its hold on me, not even on the brightest of days. Don't think about these things. Sometimes people never experience sleep paralysis until they hear about it from other people. I think opening the mind to suggestion may open a doorway that is better left alone. The only access is through the mind during sleep. The time that we are at our most vulnerable. That being said, there is a documentary on Netflix about sleep paralysis that is very interesting. The Nightmare. Listed under documentaries, it explores the horrors of sleep paralysis and shares the similar stories of different victims. Stories eerily similar to my own. This is my story, involving the presence of an evil entity fighting for possession of your soul, is one of the most terrifying situations imaginable. I could not wake up. My son had to shake me awake. When my eyes suddenly flew open in mid-scream, he said my eyes were as black as night. No people, just soulless black empty pools. That, more than anything, made me believe that was more than just another horrible nightmare. I truly believe I would have lost that battle, and never woken up had my son not intervened. I lay there soaked in sweat, trembling, heart racing for quite a while afterwards. I have never been the same. As a side note, it was my own fault. I had been joking around, talking about selling my soul to the devil in exchange for a better life. It was only me kidding around. I didn't believe in the devil, but feel differently now. But I guess it's not the best to joke around in the supernatural. I was on a website that asked the question, have you ever tried to sell your soul to the devil? I answered sarcastically. Well, I offered a few times, but he never showed up. This was yesterday. Last night I had a night terror of a dream so horrible that my brain immediately blocks it from memory upon awakening. All I remember is that I was fighting for my soul with my entire physical and spiritual being, trying to scream myself awake to escape the dream. Chris, my son, heard my cries and came to my rescue. He relayed to me that I was fighting, a being of pure evil for the possession of my soul. Wave after wave of horror and evil washed over me, and I was losing. That I had looked into the face of pure evil, and yet had no discernible facial features. I don't remember any of it now. The memories have faded. But I had relayed the entire story to him immediately upon awakening. I do know that my body was still trembling from physical effort, and soaked with sweat from the strain. Pretty imaginative for someone that believes true evil only exists in the heart of man. I am grateful that I cannot remember the dream in its entirety, only bits and snatches of the horror that surface from time to time. I am so grateful that my son heard my cries and rushed to help me escape from a dream from which I could not awaken. When I was about twelve, I got my own room for the first time in my life. I was scared of sleeping alone, as I had shared a room until then, but after about a month, I was fine. One time during summer, it was really late at night, I believe 1 or 2 am. I was on my iPod for a while, but decided it was time to go get some sleep, when I laid down and closed my eyes. That's when I felt something touch my leg. It wasn't a hit, but it was enough pressure to know something was definitely touched, and it felt like a dog's paw. Now, my dog was sleeping outside. I jumped out of bed as fast as I could, got my iPad to use the light to see if anything was in my room. After that, I couldn't sleep. Fast forward five years, I'm living in another city. I wake up one night with sleep paralysis. I could not talk nor move, and I see a shadowy figure hanging over me. I try to ask if it was my dad, 
as it was roughly the same size as him, and all I could let out was a whisper. It was like shadowy, how in the movies when the shadows are emanating from the body. I closed my eyes and prayed to God, and it went away. I also had a dream where I saw a shadowy figure, again, that resembled the one I saw with red eyes, and it was asking for my soul. I know it sounds corny, but in my dream, I said no, and it immediately went away. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's sleep paralysis episode. I'm going to be trying to do videos all about sleep related stuff this week, if I have enough content, which I am looking for. Feel free to email in your nightmares, as I'd like to do a special all on people's nightmares. Why you might ask? Well. Because I've had four really horrible dreams in the last few weeks, all of them involving people I know and love being killed or, you know, something worse happening to them. Uh, like this one person in this dream is gonna have, was gonna have her arms and legs cut off by her own family. Or is it just legs? I think just her legs cut off by her own family because they wanted her to die quicker. I mean, what's up with that? Anyway, so yeah, bad dreams and Share me yours so that I can put them into a video and we can have a special video all on subscribers bad dreams But I don't mean like oh I saw a spooky ghost in my dream and woke up I mean like really messed up dreams the dreams that you think about being like damn That dream gave me nightmares so we can give everyone else nightmares So then we have this continual cycle of people sending me in bad dreams Or maybe not that's that's just a joke Anyway, if you enjoyed the video and my ramblings, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment with your thoughts, subscribe if you're new, and press the bell icon because everyone else is doing it and I hear it's all the rage. If there's a story that you would like to share that isn't a nightmare, you can email it to my email, which is fi found in the description, along with my Reddit. You can post there too, I check both of them pretty frequently. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna end the video there. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Nightmares are great. But anyway, for now guys, I'm gonna sign off. Stay awesome, have sweet dreams, and I'll see you in the next one.